I'm Najee. And I'm Melissa. And today we are here with Tanya Javi, who is currently in her seventh season as head coach of MSU Denver's women's basketball. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, thanks Taking for having time me. out to do this. Yes. Really appreciate it. Yes, thanks for taking your time out today. Sure. Uh, to start off, what uh, was your major in college and how did that influence you to become a coach? Uh, my major influenced me less. It was communications, public kind of corporate public relations. Uh, but I always kind of knew I wanted to coach. So the playing was the easiest part. But, um, but the communications kind of helped because all you do as a coach is you just talk all day long and communicate. So mm -hmm. it didn't. It was definitely helpful, but it didn't influence. I already, I already knew that I would want to coach. Yeah. So why not business marketing like other people do? Um, I originally wanted to be a journalist. I thought I wanted to be a sports journalist. I love sports. Mm -hmm. And so this was the easiest way for me to switch majors when I was in school to get my degree without having to completely start over. So that's what I did is communications. And I originally thought I wanted a master's in business so I could kind of do corporate public relations, get some business schools and get started on a business degree. I never ended up doing that, but I, I'm now almost through with my master's in organizational leadership, which is perfect nice. for what I'm doing now. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. What, what school are you attending? CSU uh, Global. CSU oh. Global. Mm. So it's all online. Yeah. I wish I could be saying it's Metro, but it's, it's real convenient because it's online. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. what was really good for me. The easiest route is the yeah. best route. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we see that you were in, in three assistant co coaching positions before becoming a head coach at San or University of San Francisco. What was kind of a major factor that made you want to move from San Francisco to Metro? Um, I actually got fired. So oh. it's okay. Wow. That is a big, and I'm originally, I'm a native of Denver. Yeah, so yeah we saw you went to Evergreen yeah. High School, yeah. So actually, and we just didn't win enough. Made a couple of recruiting mistakes because we were doing very well those first two years. The two recruiting mistakes really cost us a couple of years, and so we weren't going to have the time to do that. But I think if you're in coaching long enough, it eventually happens, and this was a great opportunity for me to come back home and continue being head coach. So. There's always a silver lining in everything, so yeah, that's why and I, I came back. It's meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> um, so how would you describe the balance between your personal life and your work life? Well, I think it, so Metro State's a Division II school. Mm -hmm. San Francisco is a Division I school. I think in Division II you have a little bit more balance of your life. You have a little bit more free time. Mm -hmm. It's really important, though. It's really easy, and I'm one that can do that where I'm going to not take any time off. So what I try and do now is at least one day during the week, during the season, to not watch film, not worry about basketball. So you ha it makes it, you have to have a concerted effort where you're gonna take time away from the job because this is a job that you can worry about 365 days a year, uh, seven mm -hmm. days a week, 24 hours a day. So you have to make that effort, but I think it's easier at Division II. Mm. And what is um, what is a typical work day or work week look like for you? Uh, well, during the season, we're at six days a week. So we go Monday through Saturday, and then wow. I said to Sunday, because we play Friday and Saturdays. So your Saturdays, you're working, you said Friday nights, you're working. So um, you're probably working uh, 70 hour weeks, maybe 75. How are you not exhausted? I'd be <laughs> exhausted. I and you do, do you do get tired, but, but again, it's maybe taking some time off, um, you know, in the middle of the day or leaving early one time, but it's getting away, but it, it's a, it gets to be a grind at times. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes in the week, like we might take Mondays off, we'll go, okay, Sunday, Monday, I might tell my staff, but our players, it's a huge commitment for our players because they're not taking Monday off from school. Mm -hmm. So we were, it's, it, it tends to be for those four months during our season, it's, it's a lot of work. Yeah. So we might be in the office anywhere from seven to eight and stay until five, six, and then, then recruiting, you have to go out and watch games. So you could be having 15, 16 hour days if you're going to watch a game. So. That takes it's a toll on, on, you, on you mentally. Yeah, yeah. It, it can. And so we're finishing up school. Once we finish up school now, you know, we'll definitely want to have my assistants take some time off. And I want to take some time off so we can recharge our batteries. Mm -hmm. Leading um, into that or off of that, what was what's your most favorite part of the job? Uh, the relationships with my staff, relationships with the players. It's really great. And it's really great to see how the players come in as freshmen and how they leave. And then when they leave, they're, they're, you're still connected to them because you've coached them for so long, you spent so much time with them. Mm -hmm. And it's continuing to those relationships even after they graduate. But it's definitely the, the relationships with the players and, and the staff. And then what's your least favorite part? 
sometimes it's time in the, in the, in the, in the, the stress of it at times, but that's part of it too, that the competition creates stress, and at times, I think maybe I should restate that, maybe more of the things that I don't have as much control over, so, um, that's all, and the, the time commitment sometimes can get hard. And um, what percentage of the things do you not have control over? Gosh, a lot. Well, a lot of times, maybe the decisions of the players, like recruiting, their decisions, what, why this may good, be good or not. Uh, their decisions they make while they're here. Sometimes, as young people, we all make, you know, I made bad decisions as a young person. They make that, that is, it made me make a poor decision. So it's not that we're going to be too judgmental on them. It's just to help them grow up. That's part of our role, too, is when they're 18 to 22 year olds, help them grow and learn from any mistakes. We don't expect anyone to be perfect. None of us are. But, so those are some of the things that you don't have control over. That yeah. Then you have to, forces you to make some decisions. But. Certainly. Uh, we see that your team has previously been active in the community. What is the driving force behind that? Well, that's part of the mission of the university, our mission of our athletic department, and, and then ultimately the mission of every program. So our goal is to do 20 hours uh, a year as a team. Is there certain like activities that you do that you have we to do, or do you let them choose something uh, that they We ask them, in? yeah. So we've oh. done the, the breast walk, breast cancer walk, mm -hmm. uh, go to boys and girls clubs. We cook dinner for a homeless shelter, for women's homeless shelter. Uh, we've donated different things. We do a lot of clinics. Those are the main things that we've done. We're, well, we would like to go down and serve food at the Denver Rescue Mission, but really that uh, giving back. We've mentored, partnered with Denver West High School girls team as mentors. Uh, they come to practice, we might go to practice, and our girls are mentors to the high school girls. That's cool. Those are some of the things that we do. I think that's definitely beneficial, especially when you're in high school and you have an older person that's leading you and kind of giving you insight and experience that when you go into college, that you'll have that experience, you'll have that mentorship that right. helps you become better. Right. Oh, yeah. It's Gives you the awesome. upper hand. And the girl, it, it, yeah. It's good for the girls, but it's also good for our girls to, to feel good about that, and that will give it back. So mm -hmm. it's really important. So I'm going into um, your coaching portion. How is it possible that in your first season here, you were able to lead the team to their most successful uh, season in school history? A couple things. I think we had a, a, the coach previously w left a great foundation, and then we got one transfer, a Division One transfer, who had been here before. And she came out of retirement, so to speak, but she was 24. And she came back, and it just was kind of a perfect storm, and we had a little bit of luck in the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. But we got to a point, I think the new system with a, um, a new coach, kind of to get that spike, that new a new energy, but also a new defense. And then, the, like I said, the girl that came back, ultra competitive, ultra intense. And so it was, she wasn't gonna let the team lose. So I think that's, the, the big factor was the girl that transferred in, that came in with the new That's cool. So in um, two seasons on your 2014-2015 season, your team scored uh, 64 points um, as a record. How has that made you more determined, if at all, for your team to score more points? Well, that's been a focus. We're almost done with our uh, postseason, but that's going to be a focus next year. But we're better off it. We've always been great defensively. Now it's we want to get better offensively. Mm -hmm. So, and I think we have a team that's been together for two or three years now. So they're going to know each other better. And, I think we'll start, you'll see an increase in our offense. What is the biggest challenge as being a head coach? Hmm. Well, I think the decisions that you have to make sometimes. And sometimes you have to make tough decisions, but it's those decisions that, and the buck stops with you. You like that, and sometimes that's a challenge. So that, that's the challenge of those making those decisions. I think it's, it's love the X's and O's and that, but it's those decisions that's what is going to determine your success, your, your recruiting decisions. That was those decisions I made in San Francisco cost me my job. I didn't know it at the time. But, so now it's the, the decision making that's a challenge. It's, it's hard because it's to make good decisions. Yeah, always. <laughs> After seven years as head coach of the basketball team, how much longer do you plan on continuing this journey? journey? Maybe not just at Metro, but do you maybe plan? I go back and forth. I can see at least five years. I can see at least another ten years. So you know, I'm 55 years old, so closer to the retirement. And but I love what I do. 
I could see me doing it for quite a long time. And then after a few, when you retire, do you think you'll still play a big role in, in sports or maybe Metro alumni? Or oh yes, I know. I, I've been sports event in my life, in my life, my whole life. I can't imagine really. If I quit working, it will never stop. So yes, it will be. And Metro will hold us, always hold a special place in my heart. Because now I've been here seven years, but yeah, that's, that's that's the longest place that you've been at a time yes. touching. So yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yes. So do you plan on staying here for the next five years, maybe? Or? Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty yeah. sure I don't see for seeing not being if, here. If an opportunity was to come arise, would you? Would you It'd have to be the right opportunity, but the, I, I really am from Colorado. I'm a native. There's no. It would have to be a really great opportunity for me to want to leave. Mm -hmm. So it's been it's been very good here at MSU. Nice, nice. Well, we need not to have you stay here. You're doing a great job with the team so oh, far. Thank so, you. They, we need you. They need you. So, oh, well, thank so you. That's very five good. years is it'll go by. At least five, it'll go by quick. Seven yeah. years has already gone by really quick. Yeah. Yeah. I bet. yeah. So. I bet. So um, going to why you're doing this, who is your uh, biggest role model, whether it's personally or coaching-wise? Well, coaching-wise, I played at the University of Tennessee, so I played for Pat Summit. So she's my mentor role model, and I don't know if you know who that is, but she recently passed away from Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. but she's the all-time winningest coach in men with, with men or women. So I played for her back in the 80s. She's the reason I coach, so that's my biggest role model. That's right awesome. Mm -hmm. yes. So that's the point of going back to having your girls coach the kids in high school. Right. Is so your your coach of college brought you to where you are now? Yeah, yeah, and that's her tree. You know, that's her legacy. She's got like over a hundred, hundred or former players or managers or whatever that are coaching her. Nice. So that just kind of her influence is all over the place. Mm -hmm. And especially being a female role, since females in the right. sport industry is hard to come by. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You guys are finding out. Yeah. 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 So, um, what advice would you give um, to those people who are looking to get into the sports industry? Be willing to do what uh, whatever it takes. I mean, I think there's there's people that, and it's hard. Probably, I bet any industry is competitive. So just do whatever it takes to. To and just want to work hard, have a positive attitude. And like my assistant here, he found a job in Millersville, Pennsylvania. It took him three months, but he was he was relentless. So you have to, you have to be a little relentless. Yeah. Do you know if any of like the staff here is part of any of like the sports program? Because I know for the sports program here, we have like internships and field experience. Do you have any opportunities and coaching for that? We do, yeah, internship, we would take some people. I mean, I know my assistant now is looking for interns like in the marketing, but we would do, in the sports industry too, we would definitely take any, anybody that would be interested in coaching or marketing or anything else like that. Um, to, yeah, we take their help for sure. I will thank you for taking oh, the time thank out. You so thank much. you, Ken. Yeah, it was nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Looking well. to see the girls win a championship. Yes, I hope so. that we do. Yeah, I think <laughs> Five we, years we, to next do year it. we've got yeah. we've got we're really experienced and we've got some good recruits coming in. So awesome. we, we've got a chance. Got a finger. I never crossed. want to say for sure, but <laughs> yes. you know, yeah, yeah, and you, it's a great a chance group of girls. better than nothing. Yeah, so. exactly. Exactly. I will thank you. Thank for you. Your time. Well, thank, thank you for you. your interest. Too. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Come do some games.